All right, folks, in this video, we're going to tear down the H610i DDR4 from Gigabyte. 13th gen CPU was installed and did not work, right? So they're not shipping with updated BIOS. So we need to put a 12th gen in here. Now I'm going to take certain things off of here and leave certain things on. Main thing, um, you know, either turn your power supply off or unplug it from the wall uh, or both. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take the graphics card out. There's a little thing here. I'm going to leave the uh, the cable, display port cable attached, right? And I think we are, uh, we might need a little more light. So, there we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the CPU cooler. Even though I could just put it to the side, that would make life so much easier. Um, but what do we have left, folks? Well, I'll leave the USBs plugged in. You should never uh, carry your motherboard like I'm doing, but I'm going to keep the mother USBs. I'm going to keep my power switch plugged in to the front panel. Um, our 24 pin power connector, we'll leave that, and then we will leave our CPU power connector, the 1x4. So, what does that mean? Well, we've got to uh, now take off our tower, and then most likely all of the mounts. So if you watch the other video, you'll see a complete installation. Uh, this one is just kind of showing me, hey, I screwed up. Well, I shouldn't say I screwed up. I knew this was not going to work. And I went ahead and did it so you guys would know. Uh, for those of you that haven't bought a uh, 12th gen for this, you'll need that to update the BIOS. All right. So we're going to clean the CPU off. All right, I also forgot we're leaving the RAM in there. Uh, you know, I'm so confident about my installations that, you know, I didn't check to see if the RAM was bad. Well, we've used this RAM in, in five of these videos in the last week, right? So it's been working. Sometimes you can obviously have a bad RAM slot. You could have um, bad... Bad RAM slot, bad RAM. And of course, our CPU could have been bad. But I'm pretty sure because I just made a video a little while ago. Now, I could be, you know, super lazy and not completely disassemble this. And quite honestly, almost feel like that so these are just spacers they're sitting on the backing plate all right so we'll leave those in because really i've only got to get this bracket out of the way now we do have a magnetic tip phillips head so hopefully these screws will uh come up and out or not yeah might be a little too heavy if I didn't have the RAM in there I might be able to get that out of there all right we'll leave those in even though in a second they're probably gonna fly off so undo that pop that open and boom grab your CPU so I'm going to, for the hell of it, put an i9-12900KF in there, which would be absolutely ridiculous for this motherboard. All right. Hopefully that is the i9-12900KF. Yeah. We also have the i9-12900KF, and we have an i9. 13900KF. Now, when I put this in, 
You could line this triangle up with the triangle that was on the plastic cover, which we don't have on here. But reading left to right, the print, you know, this is the left side, so the I.O. portion, your uh, print would start from the left, and that lines up with that. There's also these grooves in here, so I can't rotate this 180 degrees to put it in. It's only going to go in one way. It definitely would not go in 90 degrees, right? Um, and if you did that, that would be a huge mistake. All right, so I always like to double check that this is seated good. That green board should be about the same level as the gray frame, right? Now we'll drop this down gently. You don't want to be rough because if you unseat the CPU and then you go do this next action, you will damage your uh, motherboard sockets. Put a finger here to hold that down and grab the lever and voila all right so we're good there now um i'm going to wait to put my cpu paste on until i put the brackets back in place as you could accidentally stick your fingers in there and make a total mess and this uh, cpu cooler is one of the thermal right ones 125 pipe model. Uh, I have at least five Thermalite CPU coolers. Uh, we have, for the 120 millimeter version, we've got a four pipe one, a five pipe, and a six pipe. And obviously the six pipe is the best out of those. And then we have the uh, Peerless, I think it's a Peerless Assassin 120, which is uh, two towers and two fans. Absolutely the best deal on a CPU cooler for, um, you know, these type of, uh, uh, I would say, for any of the locked Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs. Um, not really going to cut it for the i7-13700K or the uh, i9-13900K or KF. Uh, but they're great for, I would say, any of the 12th gen CPUs. Uh, I don't think I ran it with the 12900KS, but uh, with the KF I have, and it's been fine. And I've also ran it with the i5 13600K, and that was a good match for it. But eventually I may do a review on it. I know, uh, funny thing is, you know, there's two CPU coolers that I've had on my channel that have for my channel done great like video wise the Vitru V5 uh, which before anybody was talking about that I had gotten accepted a uh, free uh, fan or CPU fan and installed it and boom next thing you know uh, thousands and thousands of views later that video actually is one of my best as far as monetization goes um, and I've reinstalled that thing a ton of times so out of any product I've ever had on the channel it has made the most money from that aspect now uh, coming up behind which is an even better cooler for right around the same price that Peerless Assassin and uh, Peerless Assassin 120 SE just absolutely an amazing CPU cooler much better deal, much better quality. All right, so we've got this in, folks. Let's go ahead and put some thermal paste on here. I'm going to grab some uh, Arctic MX4, and we'll just put a blob in there. Now, you saw um, we only got, like, a little bit of coverage, right? Three lines is probably the, the best technique. If you have good control spreading it, otherwise, just stick with a big old blob. All right. This CPU cooler, I think it's ever so slightly off center. So we're going to assume that this side is uh, a little more distance from the outside to the outside of the uh, tower. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this down. So yeah, basically the last video I did, we did not get this to post to the BIOS, right? 
with that 13th gen in there. And so now we're doing a um, 12th gen. All right, so you want to take your time, a um, few threads at a time, both sides, back and forth or alternating, and then that'll help spread the paste. And make sure that you tighten this thing down good because uh, if your CPU cooler is floating above your CPU, which I mean it's going to do, but you want to have thermal paste in between it, between the two, filling in those gaps and allowing for good heat transfer. If there, this thing is not sitting far enough down, uh, you will not get good heat transfer. All right, so we got that. Now with our um, CPU fan, this time I'm going to leave both of these on. And we're going to try and get this on. Without disconnecting it. It looks like we are not off to a good start here, folks. This thing is popping out over here. Try this again. And of course, all right, we'll do one side at a time. You know, a lot of times this works great, and then when you're making a video, it doesn't work so great. All right, so drop that down, pop that into place, and then we're going to do the other side. Now we have our um, power connector. I'm going to plug that in in a second. Definitely don't forget to do that. You'll be surprised how hot this thing can get if you don't plug in your fan. All right, so we've got that in. Now the cable will reach and plug in our four pin and that is in too, all right? So what does that leave us left to do? Our graphics card, which we removed in the last video, has the uh, display port. Plug that in, or insert it in, I should say, and we're good to go. Now plug your power supply in, turn the switch on, fire up the power, shut the lights off, and hopefully, We'll see something on our screen this time. Now, if we don't, okay, I just saw the keyboard lights come on, so that is usually a sign that we're going to see something on our screen, and voila, there we go. So, uh, something quick here. You can see there's our CPU, our RAM. You would want to turn this on to enable it to uh, overclock your RAM. RAM for this could be good up to 3200 megahertz, right? And folks, that's all I'm going to show you in this video. Looks like my monitor's a little cocked, or the stand is, one or the other. Thanks for checking out the video. Um, like I said, you will need a BIOS update if you buy this Gigabyte H610, um, H610i DDR4 motherboard. Thank you.